Greetings and welcome to Revna Den. I'm Michael Hasenfang and this is episode 18, Leviathan. How to view the lying media, big tech, and government. And boy, in the last three years, uh, have we seen just an explosion of that lately. It's been absolutely nuts, especially for many of us who are trying to speak out against it or to speak the truth and to just be silenced in every single measure imaginable par from being executed, which I think maybe some of us might even have been. <laughs> so it's been absolutely nuts these past couple of years. And to think that there isn't some form of collaboration between politics, between big tech, between the entertainment industry, government. I mean, it's just, you've got the blindfold on so incredibly <laughs> tight. It's, it's insane. Um, I've been removed from certain platforms. I can speak that for myself. Itch in the ear. Sorry. Um, I know many friends uh, and many other people within the entertainment industry, within journalism, within government, especially government. I've, you've seen what happened to 45. I mean, if it can happen to him, it can happen to pretty much anyone. The funny thing about all this is, is that if there <clears throat> was some sort of uh, falsification to what we were saying, like if there was some sort of lie, if there was uh, no truth to anything being brought forth by myself, by the people I know, um, and other people who are working in journalism and politics and the entertainment industry, uh, they they wouldn't need to cover it up. They, they wouldn't need to try and find a way to silence it. If it was just fake, people would point it out as fake and we'd move on from it. We, they, people, nobody would pay attention to them or to us or, you know, and they just, they just keep carrying on. But it seems to be the opposite of that. It seems to be that whenever somebody wants to speak the truth, they will try anything and everything they possibly can to shut that person down instead of just making them look like a fool and be like, hey, look, look at how incorrect you are, you know, and be like, oh, okay, well, my mistake, I'll just move on from it, you know, admit the faults and just, you know, truffle on with life. That's kind of how I feel about these episodes or my mentality towards this uh, last last harvest um, scenario, this kingdom age that's going to be coming up soon. I never thought of it as fact. I never even believed in it. I didn't even know what it was until just these past couple of years and uh, listening to the prophets, listening to them speak, watching certain things unfold after they speak about it, showing certain places in the Bible where it's like, yeah, this is, look, it says it right here. And we just never paid attention to it in the past. And it could be that God even blinded us from it and revealed it or is slowly revealing it to us within this time because maybe, uh, you know, the the devil would, uh, would have had time to strategically plan it out and make sure that it didn't happen if that was the case, um, if he was one step ahead of the game. So even then, with our blinders on, but we're now slowly starting to be revealed to what is going on and seeing everything unfold before our eyes. Uh, it, it would just be, you know, I'd, I, I would just own up to it, I think is the best way to explain it, if it wasn't true. If this carried on for another 10 years and nothing happened and people are just like, oh, you just got to keep waiting for this to go down. And it's been like, you know what, it's been like a decade now. It's been going on two decades, you know, <laughs> like it just keeps carrying on and on and on. We're done waiting. So, and even though the wanderings in the wilderness in Exodus uh, sorry, I had a brain freezer in Exodus, you know, went on for like 40 years. It was different times, different measures. Um, they also saw Pharaoh fall during the Red Sea crossing, and that was before the wilderness wandering. So they at least got to see the miracles happen. They saw the pillars of fire and they saw the pillars, uh, the, the pillar of clouds in the daytime as well. They saw the, the plagues that happened upon Egypt. They witnessed all this. And they still grumbled and complained and then went into their 40 years in exile, you know, or just the wilderness wandering, sorry, until they were able to enter into the promised land. Uh, for people today, I think it's almost the exact opposite, where if we saw signs and wonders, we'd be like, okay, we get it. There's a God. We, we saw you act and we saw what went down and we're agreeing with you. So I don't think it'll take as long. I think we're going through a wilderness wandering before the miracles happen. I think it's reversed. And that's because maybe back in those days, um, miracles, 
uh, like supernatural actions, magic, stuff like that. And I'm not calling God, you know, magic. I'm just saying, like, with the Pharaoh's priests, when they saw Moses turn his staff into a snake, you know, the Pharaoh's like, that's a parlor trick. Here, I'll have my priests do the same thing. And they did, you know, to that, to me, that's considered magic, what they were doing, or they were using doctrines of demons. But the end result is, is that Moses' snake ate the other two snakes. So kind of shows that he was the one in control. Uh, but still, maybe they were used to that back then, where they saw miracles like that, and that's like, that's just, that's, that's an everyday occurrence. That's a, that's a normal Tuesday here, you know? So even with the miracles in front of their face, with the plagues that were happening, with the Red Sea crossing and stuff like that, as miraculous as it was, and how we see it as just completely supernatural, maybe it was a little bit more like, magic and the supernatural workings back then were more commonplace for them, um, especially with falsified doctrines of demons and the powers that they had, you know, just totally encompassing Egypt and also as well as Babylon and uh, many of the other places where the, uh, the Jews were under captivity or under another person's rule at Rome, maybe even, you know, um, can't can't say that for sure but i'm just that's just my own interpretation of it like how they could see the miracles and just grumble at it and be like ah, you know that, that that's nothing he's not gonna he's not gonna come and save us where today if we saw the miracles it's like i think he's gonna come and save us this seems this seems pretty in the bag and it's more of a waiting or a wilderness wandering for us right now but even if that doesn't come to fruition um and it just turns out that we were <laughs> We were all fooled, all the prophets today, all the people speaking into this were somehow fooled um, and that it's not real. I'll definitely own up to it. You know what? I fell for something that I believed was going to be the real thing and it wasn't and I'll own up to it. And you, you'd think people in the media and big tech and the government and everyone who is listening to us or trying to speak what we believe is the truth into this would just be like... Let them have at it, you know. What we don't need to take them down because the more we tear them down and the more we try and hinder their speaking, the more they will get people to listen. It's kind of like cutting off the head of a, a hydra. You know, you cut off one head and two more pop up. It's it's just like they're multiplying because of the hindrance that the government is giving us. So you think they would have figured that out? And I think they have. And I don't think they care because they're not trying to hinder what's false. They're trying to hinder what's true. And they're trying to spread out their own lies to cover up what we are trying to promote as happening, as going to be truth, as it's coming and you need to be ready and prepared for it. And nobody wants that. Um, kind of how people think with 45 on how he's the real president and 2020 election was a complete and utter fraud and that we have a fake and falsified president in there right now <clears throat> you'd think that with uh all the exposure that was coming out all the videos all the all the showings of the 2000 mules and mike lindell's uh, what's what's it called absolute truth was it absolute proof or absolute truth? I don't know. But the videos of all the cyber cybersecurity and the infiltration we had that way through the boats and just all this information, you think that they would somehow be able to retort that or retaliate against it or show like, no, this isn't really what happened. This is, you know, this is what happened that day. And we have proof of that. But instead, they just shut him down. They shut him down, shut him off, remove all his ads, uh, take away all his sponsors. He can't sell anything anywhere, you know. You know, it's just like anything and everything they possibly can to shut the guy down, not let him speak, not let him say anything, not to speak in a defense against what he's saying or show proof against what he's saying. Nothing like that. We're just just shut him off, shut him down, shut him up, make sure none of this gets out. And that would seem contrary to something which is false. That seems like something where they're trying to promote the truth and they're just not wanting anyone to know about it. So this is kind of where we're at today. And we see this in government and in, in, in the politics that are being played out in the courts and the judicial systems that we see of just these countless, countless indictments all the time, nonstop. We see it in big tech with places like Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and the old Twitter, 
now X. Hopefully that'll be changing soon. I'm still removed from Twitter. <laughs> so I, I, I haven't fought against it. I'm waiting. I'm having faith that 45 will return. And when he does, that's when I'll be putting in my complaint and grievance to them from being removed back in November of 2020. I'm still not on. So, um, and be like, hey, so that thing that I said in the past that turned out to actually be true. Yeah, you have about four years of grievance that you need to catch up on now. So, I'm waiting on that. I'm not retracting what I said. I believe he won. And if you don't believe that, you're just a buffoon. So, or severely misled into Leviathan's lies. And before we jump into it, uh, I'll, I'll start off with saying uh, who Leviathan is, and then we'll dive deeper into it. But first, let's uh, get into communion before we do that. So here we are. <clears throat> Wait for wine. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time today that we can come and gather and break bread together if anyone's doing it with me, if not do it by myself, in remembrance of what you have done for us. And I pray that what I speak today kind of brings a little bit more insight to those who are listening to the media or listening to Leviathan right now and are confused and troubled by exactly what is going down in the world today and how maybe to overcome it. Um, sort of how I overcame it. I'll give them my hints. Hopefully it will help them and not confuse them even more because I want them to focus more on you and not what even myself, any other prophet, uh, any other pastor or priest has to say, but that they come to you and get discernment straight from you, from the Holy Spirit to understand what is going on in the world today and how to overcome the lies which are being brought forth and the exclusion of certain people, the shutting them down, the silencing of certain people that are trying to speak the truth and get the truth out there to people who sincerely, desperately need to hear it, including those within the church, because there is a lot within and under the religious spirit as well, which I will get into next week. But today we will talk about the external world and the bombardment we get from those. And once we start shutting out certain lies and listening more to what you have to say, we may hopefully in turn then be able to have even greater discernment within the church of those who are not awakened or for those who are wolves and sl uh, uh, slipped in, sorry, as sheep and are trying to corrupt and distort many people of faith into believing this lie. Uh, we desperately need you right now, Lord, and please help us and give us guidance today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I did that a little backwards today. Usually I take it and then I pray, but I'm giving thanks right now as well, Lord. <laughs> so add that to the list in the prayer that I gave. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us. I'm a little out to lunch today. So um, I took off yesterday because this is the weekend for our anniversary. I took an extra day off just to help around the house and have the wife and I go out so we can actually eat a breakfast together for once. I think it's the first time we actually had breakfast. It wasn't breakfast even because it was like noon, so it was like a brunch. Um, but we went out to Cracker Barrel and had, had a good meal there. And now we're going to be going out today. The girls are away, as, as I said they would be. Grandma will be taking them afterwards and then having a babysitter. We'll be gone all day. So uh, I'm trying, I don't want to rush this, but I'll try and keep her going so that I will be able to finish it before we head out this afternoon today. So, Who or what is Leviathan? We've seen this name come up a few times in the Bible, uh, that being in Job and Isaiah and Psalms. But I, I think the biggest one would be that within Revelation. And I don't think people caught on to it all that much um, in places like Job or in Psalms and Isaiah. It's, it's known as a beast, a serpent of the sea, and they live in the sea. Uh, and uh, Leviathan, if I know my folk, my names correctly, means to coil or to be twisted. And when 
The Bible speaks of Leviathan, speaks of Leviathan in the Old Testament. I can't speak today. I don't know what it is. Um, it, it is giving a representation of this particular creature in more of a natural setting. Like some people think that, for instance, Behemoth in the Bible is actually a bronchiosaurus. Um, Leviathan may be that of something of, you know, a representation of like a serpent or um, like the Loch Ness Monster even. Though I, I think it's something way more different than that. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's giving a representation uh, like a, a sign of a natural animal, but it seems to me especially these days when the prophets speak of Leviathan and talking about the falsification of certain words that it is protruding from its mouth, the lies and the accusations that it gives, is that of more of a demonic entity. And it seems that Leviathan is more or less the mouthpiece of Satan, the mouthpiece of the beast. And in Revelation it explains this where John saw a beast rise up from the sea uh, with seven heads and seven horns and upon its horns were ten crowns and I believe that this the seven heads of Leviathan are a representation of the demonic entities which are in all seven pillars or all seven mountains of our society now the seven mountains of society are as follows their family religion media uh, entertainment, media and entertainment are a bit different. Media is more the form of like journalistic news sources, news media, as opposed to entertainment like movies and stuff like that. Um, business, like small business. Government, oh yes, the educational system, <laughs> schools. So all seven, if I get a hold of my hands correctly right there. There, now you can count in, in the direct, in the correct way. Now is it this way? Is that how you see me? Like that? Yes? Seven? Seven. There you go. You yeah, count. Okay. Sorry. You're backwards from me. Uh, yes, the seven mountains of society and the seven horns uh, showing their power and the accomplishments from their horns. The ten crowns. I have no idea what that represents within each mountain or pillar of society, but it seems that they have complete control and sway over every single aspect of our life. And this is the beast that rises up from the sea in Revelation and does get stomped out. I mean, it does get crushed underfoot. But I think there's a lot of things these days which promote and show exactly how strong Leviathan is, uh, just how much of a hold it has over our lives in this day and age, especially within the past couple of years where it was there in the past. But we didn't recognize it because we didn't have the internet or uh, this mass media, this mass communication um, that we have today, where a shooting in, like, say, Russia happens in a small town and literally Kansas hears about it like two minutes later, um, where it would take months, if not years, to reveal this information if anybody cared at all like even just a hundred years ago so we we see this explosion of communication today <clears throat> and i think the reason why the mask is coming off is not so much that they're slipping they are um they're getting more bold they're they're getting more brazen and emboldened by, by what they're doing and they're, they're getting to the point that they don't care because they think that they have complete utter control over us but i think it has to do more, more with the communication of how the lies were more easily manipulated back in those days and cover-ups were just were a piece of cake to do compared to what you see now you know you look at the last 2020 election literally as it was happening we were watching the fraud unfold as it was literally happening and i i even said it as it happened the the count started to stop and, and the the biden polls started to rise just skyrocket at a 90 degree angle and i'm like this is fraud just straight up fraud or just watching it watching it in real time happen so they don't have as much of a control over us i shouldn't say control um because they are still controlling us uh they they don't have uh, as much of a covert 
style as they as they did in the past we we are seeing what they're doing but they don't care anymore that we see what they're doing they're just they're just going right out and doing it anyways and could care less um and on top of it they're still promoting the lies of leviathan in doing so so not only do we see what they're doing but they're also lying on top of it and it's just like <laughs> it's just it's so right in your face it's like a lot of the things that we're listening to in this day and age it's like this is stupid this is just like i i, I can't even believe that they're saying it's just like this literally happened and they're coming out and saying this but we know this is true and they're just flat out lying and they just don't care they could care less. It's like we're just, they're feeding the masses who are still asleep and are still buying into this lie. And it's just, it's freaky. And the ones that are trying to promote and bring out the truth are the ones that are being ridiculed, are the ones that are being called crazy. And I understand, you know, the conspiracy theorists and stuff like that. I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. I'm just saying the ones that are trying to bring out the truth and talk against what Leviathan is saying is just, they're the ones that are being shut up. They're ones that are being shut down. They're ones that are being silenced. You can't speak. You can't, you know, you can't even go online to find them anymore. They've just been completely removed from society. And if they were, if they were the ones who were fake, if they were the ones who were false, if they were the ones who were bringing out a particular lie, again, you would think logically that showing them their incorrectness, proving to them, not just saying they're crazy, proving to them that they're crazy, showing them without a doubt that they're incorrect. Look at all this information we have. Look at all the evidence we have on our side. And they'd be like, okay, you know what? Maybe I was misled. Maybe I was incorrect. Maybe I was just thinking all crazy and stuff like that. And I'll go on my way. But instead we see the exact opposite. We see them being shut down. They don't want to debate. They don't want to debate these people. They're like, I, I, I don't want them bringing out any evidence whatsoever. I want them shut up and shut down and completely removed from life. Uh, and we, we, we see that even in their finances. Some people, like Mike Lindell, I mean, he's, he's just had trouble upon trouble upon trouble upon trouble upon trouble with his finances and them just trying to remove everything they possibly can in every which way they, they can possibly muster up to just utterly annihilate this person for speaking lies, for, for making himself look like a fool. Doesn't it seem kind of like a double whammy? Like he's making himself look like a fool, trying to utterly remove this person's existence and finances and wealth and the business he built up. That seemed a little extreme, you know, for a guy that's kind of nuts. Like if he wasn't speaking the truth, it's like you guys are kind of like doubling down on the insult to do that. No, no, that's that's not how it works. If he was speaking lies, it would be self-evident and you wouldn't have to do all this stuff to shut him down. The fact of the matter that you are shutting someone like that down is showing us that he is trying to tell us some sort of truth that is out there. And, and you guys are just not having it. Like Leviathan is just doing everything it can to shut these people down. And it's rather agitating because there are some of us who are woken up to everything that is going down, who understands what Leviathan is, who understand how they work and or it works within our lives. I guess I should probably phrase it that way. And we just, we try and use all the resources we can, all the proof we have, all the evidence that is there right in your face. And still people just will not buy it because they are so bought out to the lie. They're so bought out to it or they're bought out to a political party, which is ridiculous. This is not a right or left issue. This is not a Democrat versus Republican. This is not a liberal versus conservative. This is evil versus good, right versus wrong. And there is a side to this. And though evil is trying to play both sides, it's very evident on one side. It is just mouth frothingly evident on one side. And if you can't see it by now, you're probably one of the people that are bought out and sold to their agenda. So you really need to start honing in on some of your discernment and figuring out exactly what it is that needs to be brought forth, what truth you need to be uh, bringing into yourself and then pushing out, even if it goes against your own ideologies. Um, there was a lot of truths that, that uh, uh, I was against in my teens and in my 20s. And my mother was, uh, she is an ex-hippie. She was a hippie back in the day. Um, I, my whole family back in the 80s were Democrats, you know, they voted for Dukakis uh, over Reagan. I grew up listening to Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention and Cheech and Chong when I was like five years old. Uh, in my teens and in my 20s, I mean, I, I was for abortion. I was for 
uh, legalizing drugs and weed. And I mean, my whole mentality has shifted. I, I, I believe we're looking at it, but we're looking at it from a backwards perspective because we're trying to see it through our nature, through our scientific discoveries and not biblically how God created it. And once we do it that way, I think more answers will be brought forth. Um, but again, Leviathan trying to always shut that down and trying to corrupt and distort creation. Um, just even with the creation story, you know, changing it to the Big Bang or, or to evolution. Um, there's there's just there's many different ways that Leviathan is lying to us uh, in our educational system, corrupting that massively. Uh, Common Core was a joke, but now they, they don't even do Common Core. Now everything's about just being transsexual and, and about uh, your, your sexuality and how, and how you identify for sex uh, in math class. You know, in social studies, it's just like everything is about that. Uh, so every which way you could possibly think, oh, Disney, man, uh, in the entertainment industry, do you really want me to go into Disney and just how they just how that is just a complete spiraling toilet these days, as opposed to what it was back in the 30s? I mean, yeah, it's it's been it's been getting exceedingly bad. Um, another thing, <coughs> excuse me, another thing that has been out and I'm sh not sure many of you have noticed this. Some of you have, uh, I know people like Dan Bongino bring this up and, uh, Tim Poole does, uh, because they're both journalists, but, um, this whole fact checker thing. And I have been fact checked to, till God knows how many, I, I can't even count how many times I've been fact checked or had my post removed due to it being incorrect. Um, those aren't facts. A lot of those are opinion pieces. And a good way to overcome this, which is pretty much a topic of today, how to view the lying media and big tech and, you know, the government, um, is to take take their facts, which I think is a good way to name it, because if they're fact checking, they're checking the facts. They're trying to make you think that they are correcting the incorrect message given and giving their facts, but it's fact checking they're checking all the stuff that we're trying to promote because they're facts. So again, another backwards way of doing it. So uh, that always grabbed me as, as kind of a, yeah, kind of a snide remark on, on how they do their things, but take anything that they do, read the articles and don't, you, we live in a day where we need like nanoseconds of, um, attention. You know, it's just like we look at it, we read the headline sentence, and then we move on. Oh, that's been fact check. I, I, I don't need to read that. It's like, no, go into the article, read the article, and then look for these key words. Words like ought, might, maybe, should, could. Anytime you hear something which brings in a subjective line of reasoning to their article, that now has become an opinion piece. And I can't count the times that I have been corrected, fact-checked by these people. And I read their article, and that thing was just rife with coulda, woulda, shoulda, you know. That is not fact. That is their opinion to the matter. There's no, in fact, more times than not that I actually read these articles, there's no facts in them. None. There is zero facts. They're checking the facts and putting in their own opinions on it. And not only that, but they're doing it on our pages, on the pages we are supposed to have. And they're correcting our articles on our sites. And that is just flat out ridiculous. So if you think that the fact checkers are, are just these gods of like authority on what is right and what is wrong, I, I encourage you to go to one of their fact checks. The next time you see one pop up, read the article. And I bet you probably five to 10 times they'll use the woulda, coulda, shoulda words to make it an opinion piece. Try it. And you'll see exactly just how, just how corrupt and twisted this media is, this big tech giant is, in trying to sway, to twist, to coil the truth through Leviathan. If you look at just the lie after lie after lie or hoax after hoax after hoax that they have been doing perpetually in almost every situation and look at Ukraine and the ghost of Kiev or certain uh, clips of the war going on, which ended up being a video game, <laughs> just like it's crazy. Look at Trump with the Russia collusion hoax. That was fake. 
You look at the PP dossier. That was fake. Um, just all these indictments, fake. The impeachments that they did, all based on fakes. I mean, everything's fake. Fake, 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 fake. Lies, lies, lies. Hoax, hoax, hoax. Just one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. Ever since Trump came in, it has been nothing but that in our media. I just... I just shut myself off from like even watching news. Um, even the people I like, certain things like Dan Bongino, I just don't really watch anymore. There's only a few people like maybe Tim Pool uh, and Salty Cracker for the enjoyment, though he does swear like a belligerent sailor. Um, but I, I like watching his stuff. But for the most part, the news has been shut off uh, and I haven't been watching it for just months on end. And since I started my bank job in June, I click on the little Microsoft, the MSN news, and it is just saturated, saturated with anti-Trump stuff and anti-Christian stuff and, you know, MAGA crazy people, you know, posts. And it's just I'm like, we're all insane on the conservative side. And it's just, it, it is just, it is just thick, absolutely thick with it. Um, it shows you how bad that, that that Leviathan is just screaming right now, trying to get people's attention and to make us out to be the bad guys. We're just trying to show you the truth. We're just, in fact, most of the time, we're not even trying to show you the, the truth. We're just trying to be like, guys, you got to just start thinking for yourself just a little bit. Just open up your brain. Just join a debate club if you're in high school or something. Learn to actually connect with one another and have discussions and just think a little bit on this situation the fact that you are just so completely sold out to the narrative of what leviathan is saying in, in media and in government and in big tech and now the exposures finally thank you lord are starting to come through when they're starting to show their face because they can't keep all their fingers you know plugging up this dam that is about to explode now you see people um who are given like white house press briefings they just walk out anytime that questions are made on a particular subject, they're not even going to answer them anymore. They're just like, they, they can't keep up with the lies. They just turn tail and run. Uh, Biden, Biden doesn't even talk anymore. Anytime questions arise, he just, he can't, he can't even grasp the concept of the question. He just hauls it out of there. Uh, we seeing a, a lot of these uh, congressional court hearings and testimonies going on of whistleblowers coming through or people, you know, being sat down from big tech or from certain, you know, three letter alphabet soup government agencies. And they just can't keep up with the narrative. They're asking questions and it's just like roundabout, 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 you know, with the answers not going anywhere or they just flat out lie or they just look dumbfounded at you. Um, the narrative is breaking. And Leviathan is slowly coming down with the exposures because through the prophets, God said that he is going to expose all in this time. Everything, literally everything is going to be exposed. Um, so we need to be aware of that. We need to be ready for it because I think there's going to be a lot of people that you, you trust and even maybe some that I trust as well within the government or within media or people that we look up to and admire, maybe certain movie stars or certain spokespersons or journalists. Uh, and realize that they were not on the side of truth, that they were using their position to corrupt and distort the narrative. And I think we're also going to find out that there's a lot of people that um, look like the enemy, but they were in a covert operation, a sting operation, if you will, during this time of exposure to bring out, to expose the evil agenda. And I'll just come out and say it too, because Julie Green has brought it up as well too. I believe Mike Pence is one of these people. There's a lot of people on our side, on the conservative side, that are just ripping into Pence for everything that he'd done. I think he had to do it for a reason. Now, I don't think he was really forced to do it. I think he begrudgingly did what he had to do because he wanted the truth to come out, but he also realized that if he didn't do this, we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in right now. Things might have realigned. Trump still might be president right now had he done what he did. But I think we'd still be in the same scenario. And it would just would have kept progressing on forever and ever as it had always done. I think we needed this time for those who had to stand up and do what they had to do to let the corruptness, to let this evil agenda happen so we can be exposed to it. So we can wake up the masses to it.
I believe that Pence is one of these people. I think there's going to be, we'll find out a lot of these people, even a lot of people on the left that have been working to sort out this evil. Because again, it's not Democrat versus Republican. It's good versus evil. This is right versus wrong. And they're trying to expose it and bring it down and be in alignment with this sting operation that the military is doing and with what God has been planning for us during this time, this last harvest season, where it just, it can't come until this exposure happens, until the evil, the seven pillars of society, uh, all the evil within those seven mountains are just come crashing down and are destroyed and leveled to ash. And from there, we will rebuild a better future. So how do we view this? Um, in fact, I probably should have changed the title of this. I, I should be, how do we speak out against it? Or how do we, how do we, you know, retaliate? How do we, how do we act against all this stuff with Leviathan? Well, first off, um, <laughs> how's it how's it work uh take take everything with a grain of salt no i, I think you need to be more like don amici uh with, <laughs> with the bickersons and have like ten thousand shares in uh, kentucky peter salt mines uh, like you you need droves of salt when it comes to leviathan be chucking just fist balls of it left and right over your shoulders because it, it has been so corrupted and so absolutely asinine with everything that is being spoken of in big tech and government and the media these days from all angles. Uh, everything's a lie. It's, it, it's to the point, and Bongino said it best, is that um, anything the media tells you to do, do the exact opposite. It's, it's gotten to that point. If they say not to fear, start fearing. If they say to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. If they say, don't eat poop, eat poop. Like, it's it's getting to that point. Like, just anything that they say, anything at all, do the exact opposite. Because we have reached that pivotal point where just practically everything on media is a lie today. Absolutely everything. So, it's going to be very hard to figure out what to believe. And this is where we need to have uh, strong discernment. I mean, just droves of discernment dumped on you this is why all the prophets are saying um giving words that god has relayed to them saying now is the time you really i mean you absolutely there's no way around this you have to press into me you have to lean into me with all your might throw all your weight directly on me because you will not make it through this season through this dark period unless you have total trust in what i'm doing and he says total trust as well because it is going to get absolutely dark during that time. I mean, it is going to be just hell on earth. And we need to lean into him during this dark time because if we don't have trust in what he is going to do, he's using the darkness for his benefit. He's using that for his exposure of the evil. He wants the evil to do this so that they can finally be exposed and we see them for who they are. The curtain and the Wizard of Oz is being pulled away to show who they are. And he needs that time. But in order for that to happen, in order for you know them to be crushed and for him to do his work, they have to go, they have to put in all the chips, all right? They, 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 they got to go all in on this. And uh, I have no idea what it is that they're going to be planning. I have no idea the absolute lies that are going to be coming forth. I have no idea who's going to live or die through this time. Um, God says there's going to be many resurrections during this last harvest season too, as far as I know. Those people that we're trusting in may even end up dying and coming back to life. I have no idea. I don't know what's going on. All I know is that we're going to go through a bit of darkness and we need to lean absolutely into him. This is how we need to view Leviathan. We need to not listen to any BS3 it says at all. None. Zero. Zip. Zilch. Nada. As far as I'm concerned, take your TVs and smash them. Just, I mean, yes, we watch YouTube, we watch certain things, but as far as news goes, and that even includes some of the conservative news, like Fox, just, you know, just, you just got to get to the point that it's just like, we're, we're done here. Unless you absolutely, positively know for a fact that these journalists even might not even be speaking the truth, but are trying to speak. They're trying to get to the answer, to relay the truth, to expose it, to bring it forth. Because there's a lot of journalists out there that, you know, they don't really have the truth, you know, but they're searching for it. Like Tim Pool. Tim Pool is literally center left. Like he's left leaning. 
but he's probably one of the only people that I listen to because he's searching for the truth. He's trying to seek it out. He's trying to get the answers. He's trying to expose this evil agenda. If there's people that you know for a fact that you can trust and be like, I'm listening to this person because this person, even though they may not have all the answers, they're trying to bring it out. They're trying to get this to light to the people. Stick with them, shut off everything else. Or if you want to hear what the enemy has to say and listen to the jokes that they're trying to actually promote out as actual news, do that because I do that sometimes. Um, I just I just see where we are in this walk and be like, okay, what kind of junk is the, is the news trying to put out now? What kind of thing is big tech trying to push out or like shut down or like remove from their things? Because it's, it's going to get to that point where I think even Christians may get persecuted during this time because they're just they're just hell bent on wiping out everything. Look at Israel. Look at what's going on with Hamas right now. It's starting there. Uh, I don't don't doubt that we may be next. So. You know, keep your head on a swivel, as Bongino says. Oh, look to the left, look to the left, just everything. Be aware of, be totally aware of your surroundings. Don't listen to any of the BS that they have to give. Trust only who you know for a fact through discernment you can listen to and be like, okay, he's wrong maybe on this particular thing, but I trust him because he's trying to get the truth out. Okay, listen to those people and lean into God the most the strongest you absolutely positively have to do it during this time because as far as i'm concerned practically everything online these days is going to be a lie you know i mean with with you know major media with big tech with the government there are people that are trying to speak the truth try and stick to them try and try and bring yourself closer to them and know who you can trust especially with that of the lord um and I believe that's going to be it for right now. Again, I could go a little bit farther, but I still do need to do some editing before I head out today. Uh, next week, we'll be going into Leviathan. Not Leviathan. This is Leviathan. We'll be going into the harlot. We'll be speaking into Jezebel, the religious spirit of today, and how to overcome that. Because, man, if Leviathan is speaking into all seven mountains of society. He's got his fingers in the religious one as well. And we need to be aware and use discernment and understand that even though some people may have it wrong within the church, they're not uh, inherently evil. They're not the wolves in sheep's clothing. They just may have an understanding of what's going on, maybe a different uh, doctrine, maybe a different way of being brought up. And they're just sticking to that spirit of religion without trying to be religious. So there are enemies within the church, but there is those who are just asleep or they're not awake to what is going on or they just don't believe the prophets or haven't got enough of uh, proof or evidence to believe what they're saying and I, I think we need to combat the religious spirit but also try and have heart and understanding for those who aren't quite woken up to this situation where maybe you are at in this path setting in this pioneering season or even the cave dwelling season where people have been removed from your life and God is working within you to build you up for this coming last harvest season. There may be people, a whole bunch of people you know, within your congregation, within even your own church, where you just, they're just not awake to it, not aware to what's going on. They, they may sense something has changed in reality, um, but maybe they may be looking at it more from a rapture purpose like oh god's just gonna take us out of here right now it's like you there's so much other things biblically and scripturally that need to be done before that happens you're, you're jumping ahead just like the enemy is trying to jump ahead with his tribulation you're paying attention to leviathan with that again you're seeing what the enemy is doing he's trying to ramp up this season and push it forward and get more time in for himself before the true tribulation happens it's not going to happen but people are viewing it as that and they're believing the lie don't believe the lie that is going on right now. He's trying to ramp the season. It's not his time yet. God will give him that time, but it's not his time yet. So, yes, we need to be aware of these people as well and pray for them that they come to the realization of what is happening as well. Uh, and in light of that, to those family and friends who are uh, maybe not on the religious side or beaten down by the religious spirit but have just been sold out, to Leviathan, to the lies in media, to the lies in the government, to everything that is going down. Like, no, no, Russia, the, the Russia with Trump was real. You know, it's like, no, it, it's been it's been proven 100% false. No, no, that's not what the media says. You, you know these people. You know they exist. They're there. 
We need to pray for them as well. We need to use discernment when speaking to them so that we don't push it too far because you don't want to you don't want to press too deeply into that and try and sway them too much. Sometimes they just need to experience it for themselves. This is why also why God's allowing the darkness to come because some people they're just going to have to go through that to understand what is happening. And there's some of us who are pioneers, who are prophets, who are path setters, who have been in this season, who are aware of what is going on. We're being prepped for the season. So when the darkness comes, the droves will come in and we will be able to help them and explain to them what is going down. We will be able to be those beacons of light scattered out throughout this nation and across the world to those who are, <coughs> excuse me, shaken awake, if you will, during that time. Because some people, they're just going to need to be shaken away. They have been drilled so deeply into this Luciferian world that they don't even understand that it's Luciferian. They don't understand that it's corrupt, that it is that it is global elite, that is a, a satanic world system that has got them by the cojones, if you will. And they're just sold out, completely sold out to it, to that narrative. And they think that is true. They think that this is just the way life is. And when that shaking happens, we need to be there for them. We need to pray into that. We need to pray for them as well. So that is how we view Leviathan. We don't listen to what he has to say. We listen to what others have to say about it to see where they're at and how we can pray for them and how to wake them up. Maybe educate them. If you can, don't push it too hard. Okay. We, we want them to be awake, but you don't want to push them so hard that they actually turn and run tail away from you even farther. All right. God will sort that out in the end when the shaking happens and he will bring those who finally are awake to it. So this, that's, that's a hard one for me. It is because I have many friends and family who are just, they, they probably look at me as completely insane, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's something that we as pioneers and pastors have to go through. Um, Lord says they'll be eating humble pie. I don't even want them to eat humble pie. I just want them to come to the Lord and realize what's going down so that we can build this world back up. I don't want apologies. I, I just, I just, you know, I want the realization when it finally happens that they could come in and it's like, okay, do you believe me now? Yes. Okay. Now no, let's, let's go and get this stuff done. You know, it's like, I'm just, I'm not interested in apologies. Uh, all, all I want, hopefully, is reuniting with friends that I have lost in the past that did think me crazy, and now they don't think me crazy, and we can finally get on with life from that. So, um, I suppose that is it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. I hope I gave some sort of an answer to some people on how to just gauge their life through all this, is to not listen to Leviathan if they're doing it for for purposes of understanding how the enemy is working, what they're doing, and what they're saying, to open their eyes, and I suppose listen to Leviathan, but press into you during that time. Give them the sermon. Give them understanding. Let the Holy Spirit dwell within them and have no enemies present whatsoever within their lives, within their family, within their households, so that they can understand you and understand what you're doing during this time so that they are not caught off guard, that they are aware of the enemy and what he is doing, and aware even more so of what you're doing during this time, even though a lot of it, I think, is going to be a bunch of surprises. So... Uh, again, many of us, many prophets, many people who are out there right now, or past setters, or watcher, uh, watchmen on the wall, such as myself, see what is going on. And, and even we don't have all the answers. You're not going to give us all the answers because if you gave us all the answers, then the enemy would also know the answers and try and act against that in accordance to what his will is supposed to be and what he wants done, so that yours does not come to fruition. That is why you're keeping everything you know, very under the radar right now until it finally exposes in a big crescendo and the enemy comes crashing down. But I pray that people do have discernment during this time that they're aware and awakened to what is going on so that they're not so shaken awake that they're in fear of what is happening. Even though I know for some people that's what it will take. I pray that they come to you sooner than that. And thank you, Lord, for what you are during this time. You get all the glory and praise, even though I know sometimes I don't do it myself. I wish I had the heart and the joy and the happiness to do so, but I am trusting you during this time. I'm aware of what you are doing this time, and I am in agreement with you during this time. And I hope that that, <laughs> I hope that, that works. <laughs> so, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, that's it for right now. Um, the... The book recommendation I'm going to give was one I was going to give last week, but I switched it up to the Francis Chan book. And this one is going to be a book called Fasting. 
and that is by a man called Jentison Franklin. Yes, took me a sec to remember his name. Uh, again, I think I gave that book to the in-laws. I give a lot of book to the books to the in-laws to read, and I don't think they understand that I'm blending them the book <laughs> to read it and I never get it back so I have a lot of videos a lot of audio books a lot of normal books that I give them and then I never see them again uh, one day I saw them uh, going through some stuff that they were getting rid of in a garage sale and one of them was like all, all my books and DVDs I'm like wait, wait no no I'm not giving you I like you can lend these I want these back so I can lend them out again but uh, yeah so a lot of my books keep disappearing off the shelf I'll recommend that. I'll put the link down below so that you can get it. Um, I believe it's an audiobook form too, if I'm not mistaken. If not, paperback works. Uh, so there's that. And then the recommendation for a uh, person, not profit this week, I'm, I'm going to give a link to a person. Since we're talking about the lying media and government and big tech, I'm going to up the scale a little bit and give a link to my dear friend, Naomi Zipe, who... I was her moderator on YouTube before she was removed and shut down and before some frauds came in and took over her Instagram account and then she got, you know, she's off her Facebook account. She's not on there all that much. It seems she's just getting removed left and right. And many of you might know her as the anti-Greta and she's a very dear friend to me, um, almost like a daughter. Uh, uh, I don't know. She she sees me as a mentor, I suppose, but we've kind of had a slight falling out. And if you guys haven't figured it out, she is the person that I talk to. I'm sorry. She is the person that I talk about the most on here because of uh, certain ailments that she has. And I uh, ask that for those of you who can intercede and pray for her to pray for her health and to pray for her financial stability and that everything is restored back to her because she hasn't been doing too good but um she's probably the main person that i know personally that has had the most just i mean if you want just leviathan to stomp on you repetitively she's one of the people mike lindell's one and naomi is another where she, she's just constant bombardment from the enemy all the time non-stop um and so she's had that done to her life where she's had a lot of removals a lot of bans a lot of taken down and her main thing um was more based on issues with like climate change and COVID and stuff like that but the the main thing that she tries to get out is she doesn't want you to panic she wants you to think she just wants you to think for yourself just kind of the same mentality that i have it's like look you just need to take two steps back just sit down let's think let's discuss this let's work this out as civilized human beings let's discuss and debate and give the evidences to the proof that you have and then the proof that i have and let you sort it out and figure it out for yourself that's all she was trying to do and no one wanted to debate her no one wanted to i mean because i, I think they knew that uh, had they did that she would probably expose them to the truth the, the reality of everything and so she still has been working very hard to get the truth out um even though she has had much opposition even from the german government you know trying to send her books or trying to you know stall her you know silence her um as well as opposition from places like youtube and it has just just been man all she was doing was trying to speak the truth and just hell breaks out it shows you how bad leviathan is so i'm going to give you a link to her own site um you can check some of her videos out there and uh some information a thesis she did as well too um she's getting a little bit harder to find on places like youtube because i keep removing her stuff <laughs> so uh i guess that's it uh that's that's one way that i'm going to try and help her as well uh, as to get a little bit more exposure out there for her. so um yeah those are my two recommendations and i'll catch you next week when we speak a little bit more on the religious spirit and try not to be too bummed about leviathan right now uh <clears throat> don't think the world is going to hell in a handbasket again the final note is to remember that god has everything under control and it may look like the enemy is winning but god is allowing the enemy to look like he's winning so this final exposure can finally happen everything is in place everything is ready to go for god all he's got to do is flick the switch and be like okay it's go time and within a day everything gets turned around 
but there's going to be some darkness that happens before then. And the Lord needs this to wake his people up, to wake up the sleeping remnant, to wake up the world, to shake them awake to what is going on and be like, look at how deceived you have been from this Luciferian agenda, from Leviathan, from this global elitist satanic group. Hopefully that comes soon because I am so tired of waiting. Uh, at this point, I am ready for any darkness that comes. So whatever darkness, whatever shaking needs to come, let it come because I'm ready. I am ripped and raring to go and I am just sick to death of waiting. So, but I know it's in the Lord's time and I know I need to trust him and I know I need to give that impatience to him as he prepares everything and is ready to go. So, and I hope you do the same because I know <laughs> from listening to comments on Elijah's streams and so forth, there are many of you that are in the same boat I, as I am. And I just, you want to grab the screen and just shake and just be like, get off, get it done. But we need that patience. So we need to lean into him. And I think that's probably another reason why the Lord is saying, lean into me more because you're you're not just going to shake your screen you're going to take a chrome bat and smash it pretty soon because you're just you're so just sick of the waiting so um yeah we need to just find rest in him during this time and trust in him during this time i had to give a lot to the lord within these past couple of years and today I, I gave another thing which was the hardest thing to let go uh absolute hardest thing to let go and um i'm, I'm going to trust him on that and i think the thing that grabbed me the most was watching a five second YouTube clip of seeing a little kid standing outside in soaking wet grass. I think it was in his diaper, if I'm not mistaken. It was only like two, two years old, maybe yelling at the sky going, it's okay, God, I trust you. <laughs> so, and that made me realize that that's, that's what we need to have right now. We need to have, we need to return, you know, can't enter into the kingdom of heaven unless we have the heart of a child. And we need to trust God during this. So we need to say that, look, I trust you, God. It's okay, God, I trust you. I'm giving it to you. I know that you'll do what's best for everyone that I'm concerned with right now. So hopefully, I shouldn't even say hopefully, I should know in my heart that that'll change and that it will be beneficial and it will be what God wants for us. It'll be the best option for us. So I need to trust him in that. So, and I hope you will as well. Until next time, take care, God bless, and I will talk to you later. Bye.